Alright, we've had a short break. Now we're back at it again. I have realized that there is a very important topic I haven't spoken to you about, and it's macros. Macros are incredibly, incredibly powerful, especially inside of Emacs. Most um, text editors have the capability to record and playback macros. Um, Emacs has this capability as well, but what it does instead is actually it records functions. As we know, every key press inside of Emacs invokes a function with an argument, blah blah. Alright, <clears throat> what is a macro? A macro lets you record keystrokes and then play them back over and over again if you'd like to. This is incredibly, incredibly useful for many you know, everyday situations. Let's, let's go over the very basic usage of it. Let's record our first macro. The way it works is you hit F3 and down in the mini buffer you can see defining keyboard macro. Everything you press now will be recorded. This means that if you type in say Rob, and hit, I don't know, let's put some white space in, now hit F4 to finalize the macro. Every time you hit F4 you're going to repeat what you just did. That's powerful. Now, it's useful for more things other than spamming Rob in the scratch buffer. And we'll talk about one or two examples here. But this is the gist of it. This is the basic functionality of macros. So you can use it for a lot of things. One of those things, for instance... Um, oh, and by the way, these macros, uh, you can only have one macro at one time. Which is technically not true. I'll show you how to deal with this. But when you hit F3 again and record another macro, then hit F4, uh, the newest or latest macro will be played. So our ROB macro will be gone. Unless you know, unless we do some stuff, which I'm going to show you in just a second. Okay. Uh, how to do macro? What to do with macros? I have a list here of names, and I realized that. I wished this list of names was a bulleted list. So something like Amy and Derek, oh I forgot the white space at first, let's make it org mode compliant, but our list has seven names in it. So doing this by hand wouldn't be very difficult or time consuming. Imagine you had a list with, I don't know, a hundred names. Or, I don't know, maybe they even have email addresses next to them, maybe they are pairs, tuples, whatever. Let's make a macro that's going to solve this issue for us. Now just imagine, just pretend that this is a, um, a much longer list, okay? So what do we need to do in order to turn this list into a bulleted list? Let's hit a three and let's think. First things first, uh, white space, bullet, white space. Now we can move forward one word, delete the comma, delete the white space and hit enter. That should be it. Let's hit a 4 to save this and let's see how this works. And oh boy, oh boy, it works very well. Let's add some more names so I can show you another thing. Uh, what's a good name? Uh, I can't come up with names. Let's add just two more names. You can totally prefix F4 with the universal um, argument, which is control U, and type in a number, and the macro will be played back this many times. Now, Emacs is smart. If you don't know how often you'd like to play the macro, but you know, you have a long list of names here. Um, actually, let's add, I don't know, do we have, like, yeah, let's add Rob. Um, if you have a very long list of names, you don't know how many of those there are, you can totally just keep hitting F4 and just wait and see how it goes. But for long lists, not particularly practical. So let's do something, you know, something you'd normally do. I know we have five names here, but let's, let's prefix this with, I don't know, 50. And now hit F4. It's, now there is, there was an issue here. We can just delete this one white space, but it stopped since it knew that there was no new line to go to. There was, not, there was no reason to keep hitting a 4 and play back the macro. You know, playing back the macro here actually does stuff, but Emacs is smart. It did not encounter a new line. It knew that there was no word to follow, because as you probably remember, we did meta F, which is one word forward. So there's that. Now this, um, 
This worked very well. Oops. Okay. I am on my personal. Uh, oh, oops. Yeah, there's still scratch buffer. Never mind. So what happens here is, let's say you really want to keep this macro. You can totally save it and you know use it one other day. Maybe you oftentimes work with lists that are very very long, and you know maybe maybe you just need to do it. So what you can do is invoke a function called uh, in no it was name nameless keyboard macro. You can give it a name. Um, let's give it the name of an old bullet list, and you can now just use mx to invoke it like a function. You totally can do that now, so you can have multiple macros. However, there's one issue. These are not persistent. So when you close Emacs and then reopen Emacs, the macro will be gone. Uh, that doesn't have to be the case though. There's another function that I couldn't remember the name of, so I had to look it up. It's called insert keyboard macro. And it prompts us for a name. We remember uh, what the name was that we assigned, bullet list. And it gives us this little um, code snippet that we can put in our configuration. And so when Emacs starts, it sources our configuration, looks at this code, and executes it. The macro will be set, and you will be able to. You can even bind this to a, um, a hotkey. You can use global set key. You know how to do that. You've seen the other videos. To just bind bullet list to well, whatever and then you can just use this over and over and over again which is great um there is a few things to macros that i'm not going to discuss because they are nobody nobody really uses them but there's one more thing that i really enjoy and that is you can um, use f3 while recording a macro to insert a number in there and the number is going to change every time you run the macro so let, let me just demonstrate this for you. Let's hit F3 and hit F3 again. As you can see, uh, it enters at a zero. Let's, uh, let's enter and close the macro. Now, every time you play the macro, the number is going to increase, which is, you know, it's useful. It's, it's actually really useful. If you want to have like a list that, where you insert these numbers, so you can totally do something like uh, uh, let me show you one more thing before we actually apply it to the list above. You can change the default number that uh, Emacs is going to start at. And the way you do it is, again, with the universal argument. So, control U, uh, 1, F3, um, F3. As you can see, it started at 1 now. Now we are going to go to the next line and the start of the line and hit a 4 I goofed I goofed big time crap I should have had more space for this let's do this again let's do it with the with the list actually my bad my bad in this really control u 1 f3 f3 white space Next line, start of the line, F4. And we can totally just hit F4 a few times and we are going to have our list very, very easily numbered. Which is great. Because that's the point. You know, ease of use. Another thing you can do, there is another way if you don't um, use the function keys a lot. Or if your keyboard maybe doesn't really uh, make use of them unless you hold like a function key or whatever. There's another thing you can do which is control and then nope that's not it that's not it that's also not it there was one thing that actually worked oh it was never mind there. apparently it's undefined for me what that's very very odd. Okay, never mind then. There was another key binding for recording macros. Actually, let's let's check this. K, uh, K macro start macro insert counter and an argument. It is bound to F three. 
what? It was bound to an out. Maybe they deleted. Maybe they got rid of it in the newest version of Emacs. But there was another one. Anyways, with F3 you can totally do just about everything. I'm. I will, I will have to look this up. I'm not sure what happened there. But yeah, now you know how to use macros. I should have talked to you about this a lot sooner. But I kind of just forgot about it. Now that we know what macros are, you can integrate them more to your workflow. They are incredibly, incredibly useful for doing a lot of things, really, like indentation, uh, numbering things, you know, shuffling lists around, shuffling tables around. Very powerful. I encourage you to play around with it a little bit. And then just save them if you really like them. That's about it. Thank you for watching. And I hope to see you in the next video. Goodbye.